I recently received a comment in one of my videos from Paul Galata, and he asked, I've used Capture One for photo, DaVinci for video. Is there any way that I can use more than one profile on Windows PC, or should I be looking for a hardware calibrated monitor so that I can calibrate each profile? Let's find out together if this can be done on a software calibrated display. I'm Art, and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. I'll be doing this guide on my Dell laptop PC running Windows 10. If you'd like to see this guide done on a Macintosh system, let me know in the comments section. The principle that I'm about to share with you in this video will apply for both Mac and PC. However, the actual interface of where you would go in and change the profile may be slightly different for Mac and PC and the operating system version that you're running on the Macintosh side. This being said, the answer to his question is that it really depends on the display that you're referring to. If you're talking about a built-in laptop display or an all-in-one desktop PC, that is the one that pretty much is very similar to the iMac, but is made by PC manufacturers. Those are gonna be somewhat limited. Depending on the model that you have from each different manufacturer, some of them will have color modes that you can go in and choose what color mode you want to run your display in or color gamut for that matter. Most of the time, you're really just gonna be stuck with the color mode that they have already pre-calibrated your panel from the factory with which most of the time nowadays is going to be Display P3 or DCI P3. So that being said, you're really limited on a built-in display. However, for an external display such as the one that I have here, this is BenQ PD3420Q. This is part of their Pro Designer line display. This will also apply to any other displays that are external to the system and provided that the display has a color mode that you can go in and choose, you can really go in and calibrate the display in each of those color modes using the software that comes with your calibration device and now you're able to use that display in the color mode that you want to use. The distinction here though that we have to quickly understand is that this is a software calibrated display very similar to the one inside our laptop. The difference here is that the external one allows us to go in and choose a different color mode. And this, being a software calibrated display, is also different than a hardware calibrated display where all the color adjustment on a hardware calibrated display is done on a panel itself using a dedicated hardware. On this one, the color adjustment is not done on the display, however, it's done via the ICC or ICM profile, and the color is being manipulated or being changed and remapped from the video card output in order for it to match as close as possible to the reference color gamut that you choose. This being said, on a software calibrated display, it doesn't matter which one you use, there is nowhere in the program that you can go in and choose the RGB primary. So the only place where you can really choose the color gamut is from the display itself. So I have already gone in and calibrated this display at Display P3 and also sRGB. So for instance, if you're doing photo editing, you can choose to use Display P3, which is going to give you the largest color gamut possible on the panel, or you can also choose to edit your images in sRGB. So if you use Capture One, Photoshop, Lightroom, you have those two options and those two color modes that you can use. Simply enough, if you really want to go in and change the color mode, and by the way, I already have calibrated this display to sRGB as well. So what you would simply do is go into the display menu, and what you want to first do is choose the color mode. So right now I am in sRGB, what I'll simply do also is right click on my desktop, go into display setting and check for this display what color mode I have on right now. Notice that this is running the default sRGB value, which is not the profile that I made for this display. So what I'm gonna do is I have already created a profile called BenQ PD3420Q sRGB ICM. I will choose that. Now this is the profile that I have created for the sRGB. So let's say I've gone into the display menu again and I decided to, to select display P3 as a color mode. So I'll choose that. Well, what I would simply do is go back into my display setting screen and change that to PD3420Q, DP3 or display P3, which is the abbreviate name that I choose there. And this is how you would go in and change the profile so that it matches with the color mode on the display. So there's one more color mode though that I haven't done the calibration here yet, and that is Rec. 709. So for those of you that want to edit your video in true Rec. 709, what you would simply do is run the calibration by choosing the Rec. 709 mode on the display. So before you even go into the calibration software, what you can simply come in here to the display menu and choose the color mode you want to use. 
I want to use Rec 709, so I'm going to leave that there. And what I'm going to do now is launch i1 Profiler. I'm going to calibrate this display with the i1 Display Pro Plus. The i1 Display Pro will work as well, or any other calibrator for that matter that you have in your studio will work. We'll quickly wait for the device to be recognized, and we're also going to calibrate this using advanced mode. I'm going to skip the options and not explain them uh, in greater detail. I'll put a link to the calibration video for Mac and also for PC in the description below this video and up here. You can check out that calibration video which will walk you through how to calibrate these external displays with ease. One more thing I want to mention before we start the profiling is that if you have the i1 Display Pro Plus, you want to come down here under the application setting and the default display device and you want to choose the Display Plus. The reason why is because the Plus model, you can calibrate your display using BT1886, where if, for example, even if you have the device, the Plus device plug in and you choose the i1 display, which is the regular i1 Display Pro, that option would not show up. Also, if you have the i1 Display Pro and you decide to choose that you have the Plus model, it will work. However, you won't have that option to calibrate to BT1886 Gamma as well. Now that I have this device selected and the proper device, I will click on Profiling on the top left hand side. And for this one, because the interface is already on my BenQ PD3420Q that is on the right screen, I will leave that there. I have all these settings already dialed in, white point D65, luminance, I set this to 80. And the gamma, this is where we can choose. So we can choose to use the default gamma at 2.2 if you want, or if you really want to get the proper video gamma, what you can also do here is choose BT1886. Again, this option is only available on i1 Profiler, provided that you have the X-Rite i1 Display Pro Plus. So I'm going to choose that for this one. Everything else, the contrast ratio, I'll leave that at native. And what I'll do here is simply go in and run the calibration. What I would normally do here is choose a large color patch, but for this demonstration, I'm going to use small just so that we can finish this a little bit quicker. We're going to choose the option there called Adjust Brightness, Contrast, and RGB Gain Manually. And what I'm simply going to do is put this device on the display and tilt the display backwards. We'll start the measurement process. So the program is going to ask you the controls that you have. We have the contrast and the brightness control. We'll click on next. This is going to do the initial measurement to get the brightness. And essentially we want to get it close to the target that we have set. So I've set this to 80 candela. We'll see where we end up at right now. We're at 82, it's super close. I'm just gonna go forward this. So I'll click on next. What we're gonna do is have the display run the calibration. We'll fast forward this and I'll come back and we'll go over the rest of the calibration process and choosing the profile and wrap this video up. All right, so we're wrapping up the calibration right now. It's doing a few more patches verification. Calibration was successful, so that's good. I'll acknowledge the dialog. Now this is the ICC profile screen. This is where you can name the ICC profile. So for this one, because this is calibrated using Rec. 709, I highly recommend that you go in and choose a name that you're going to know what color mode you use to profile this ICM or ICC profile. So what you would simply do is, I'll come in here and remove most of the name. So I have BenQ PD3420Q and Rex109.ICM as the profile name. I'm good with that. I will click on Save Profile. This is going to generate a profile that I can use there. So that's perfectly well. There we go. 
This is going to give us some achieved calibration result. Most of the time, if the values are off by a little bit, you're going to be perfectly fine and wouldn't worry about that too much. And next, as I always recommend in my calibration video, is to always do a QA. This way you know how good the profile is and what the delta E value for a display is. So let's do a quick QA to check the quality of this profile. And this process should go fairly quick. All right, let's check our Delta E value for our display. We'll go into display QA report. I'll change the tolerance for the Delta E value to two and five. And perfect, we're still passing the Delta E value. This is awesome. Our highest is 1.7 and our average is 0.7. So this is just really an amazing profile in general. And that's pretty much it, how you would go in and calibrate this display in the different color mode that you want to use. If you want to choose to save this report out for future references, you can. For example, I'll name this one PD3420Q, Rec709, just for reference in the future. You can also put a date in there too, if you like. So what I'll do now is I'll close this out. And that is how you would go in and profile in each of the color modes that you want to use on these external display. So now that we're done with the calibration process for all the color modes that I plan to use, what you can simply do is go into the display menu, choose the color mode that you want to use, and what you can do is simply scroll up. For example, if I want to use sRGB, I'll select that and I'll come and right click on the desktop, display setting, and I'll also choose the corresponding display first and then choose BenQ PD 3420Q sRGB and now I have this set to the proper profile that corresponds to the color mode on my display. A few tips I'd like to share with you as well if you have the BenQ display, especially the PD line, is that BenQ also makes a software called Display Pilot. And Display Pilot is kind of neat. There's a few things that I'm going to quickly share with you here. Is that if you have two of these open side by side, like I have on my screen right now, what you can simply do is come in here and just quickly switch the color mode on the display. One thing that I want to recommend that you do with this is uncheck the ICC profile sync. This way, when you change the color mode on the display, it doesn't change the color profile on the Windows system. So for instance, if I go into display P3 here, you will notice that the color profile in the Windows system didn't change. If I have ICC profile syncing on, it's going to be defaulting to the BenQ default profile every single time. This way, it gives you a little bit more flexibility to profile that you can choose, but you still got to go back into display setting and choose the profile. So for instance, I just choose display P3. I'm going to choose the corresponding display P3 profile. One more thing that you can also do as well, because these newer BenQ PD line comes with the hotkey puck, if you have the one that comes with the hotkey puck, you can customize the key one, two, and three to correspond to the color mode that you want to use. And what you simply do is press those buttons and come into display setting and then choose the profile that corresponds to the color mode that you have selected. And that is how you would use an external software calibrated display and calibrate it in different color gamut. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified every time I upload cool new contents like this. And until next time, in Art We Trust.